Hi guys, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, we are going to explore the topic of beat division and also practice our very very important note values in the field of music theory. Now, note values give us the duration of the note. And with this exercise, we are going to adjust the duration of the notes and while doing so, understand the percentage of the beat associated with these note durations. Normally, whenever note durations are taught, it's sort of like that usual chart, right? You have whole notes, half notes, a quarter notes and whatnot. But it may not be a very practical way to understand this subject. So in this lecture, I'm going to give you a piano exercise to practice counting this. However, you could do this on any instrument. You could even sing it if you're away from your piano. You could play it on a guitar or a saxophone or whatever be the case. And this lesson is supplemented like all of our other lessons with Patreon notes. So if you'd like to get yourself a copy to visualize the notation better, uh, you'll have my handwritten notes as well as uh, official staff notation for the entire exercise, which you'll see throughout the video as we go through. But as a uh, resource, it's available on Patreon for a downloadable copy. And along with that, for that subscription of $5 a month, you'll also get a bunch of other things where we prepare tracks to help you improve your ear training, your notation, learning popular songs, and pretty much any supplementary content or material for our YouTube channel, which we've been doing over the past few years. So let's get cracking with the lesson. Now in the right hand, we are going to learn or just basically get your keyboards out. It'll be nice if you play along with me. So in the right hand, we are just going to deal with these four notes. C, D, E, G. Okay, so in the key of C major, you could argue this would be the Sa, Re, Ga, Pa, 1, 2, 3, 5, root, 2nd, major 2nd, major 3rd, and the perfect 5th, degrees from the C scale. Okay, you could avoid your ring finger for this lesson if you don't want to. You could just use the pinky for the G and you're good to go. So how we are going to practice beat division will be using... I, the idea of fractions, right? Now, a normal quarter note, which we learn in a 4 by 4 time signature or even a 3 by 4 time signature, essentially is the value of a beat or a value of one beat. And if you look at it in terms of fractions, there is no fraction. It's just one by one, which is one. Uh, but in terms of percentages, you could also argue that a quarter note occupies 100% of the beat, Right now, it seems very obvious, but then you'll, if you stick with me till the other parts of the lesson, you'll realize how important the percentage are, the percentages or the fractions are going to be. Because I'm going to cover every single percentage of the beat and or fractions of the beat which you'll ever have in music, or at least the commonly used ones. We are not going to get into Things like quintuplets or septuplets, which divide the beat into all sorts of other percentages. We are going to do all the usual suspects in this lecture. Okay, so the quarter note is something you would need to practice first. So you could uh, generally use a metronome while you play or you could even move your head along to the music. So right now, one, two, three. Four. And if I consider this as a 4x4, four four, I would be playing quarter notes, also known as crotchets. 1, 2, 3, 4. 2, 3, 4. And in the left hand, you could just play a single C to support this melody in the right hand. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2. If you get bored with that C, you can do quarter notes by going maybe C, A, F, G. So... A, 2, 3, 4, F, 2, 3, 4, G, 2, 3, and so on. If you're having an issue changing the notes, it's okay. You could just stick to a single C. Uh, you could also kind of alternate your octaves by going maybe C, like this. C, C, lower C, higher C. It could also work. 
So the right hand is what we are going to change in this exercise. Left hand let's keep as it is. You can even play chords in the left hand. C major, A minor. But once you commit to something in the left hand, just stick with that. Okay, so now the right hand is going to be adjusted in such a way that we go through different stages of the beat. So 100% is a crotchet or a quarter note. Now you may argue what is after 100%? Well, in truth it's like 99.99%. But to execute that as a musician, we don't have the resources because and it won't even sound great. So we just have standard percentages which we can divide the beat by or have our note values for. So the next percentage which is closest to 100, which I think is reasonable to practice or important to practice, would be the 75% mark of the beat. Now, a 75% mark of the beat, if you have a note which exists for 75% of the beat or three-fourths of a beat, that would be a dotted quaver. A dotted quaver lasts for 0.75 of a beat. So, a dotted quaver, if you think about it, a quaver is half of a beat, right? A dot adds half of that half. So what is half plus 0 0.25, 0 0.75 or three-fourths? So a dotted quaver will be utilized for this purpose. So how do we count a dotted quaver becomes an important question. You are in the world of 16th notes. So you need to count in a way which suits your brain best. So what we could do is you could say, 1E and a 2E and a 3E and a 4E and and every third beat you would be <clears throat> targeting a note. So 1E and a 2E and a 3E and a 4E and a 1E and a 2E and a 3E and a. So 1E and a 3E and a 3E and a 4E and a. Doom. That. So uh, beyond a point you don't have to even say the numbers but just remember in your mind you're dividing by 4. So even though the note value is not playing divided by four the note value is three fourths of a beat in your mind you need to divide the beat by four in order to get to the 75 percent mark right so to get to that 75 we'll have 25 percent 50 percent and 75 percent which is one e and a so if i were to play that just with a c one e and a two e and a three e and a, and a two e and a three it also forms like an interesting polyrhythm if you think about it. The right hand's doing three, one. Or the right hand in this case is doing four beats while the left hand finishes three hits. One E and a two E and a three E and a one E and a two E and a three E. So the right hand's going like three, four, one, two, three. While the left's going one, two, three, one, two, three. Right? The right hand's going one, two, three, four, one. So that's a dotted quaver. So a quaver with a dot. So how do we count it again? One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a and six. Pow, tum, pow, tum, tum, ta. So every three beats it'll recycle itself. So one E and a two E and a three E and a four. So at four it's going to recycle, which is why this works well over a three by four signature. So let's bring our note combo. The note combo is not going to change. It's going to be C, D, E, G. And we are not going to go in any other order than that. It's going to be C, D, E, G. So earlier we did two, three, four, one, two. Now to get the three fourths or a dotted quaver, we have to divide the beat by three fourths. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a two E and a three E and a two E and a three E and a one E and a two E and a three E. In your mind, you could say one E and a two E and a three E and a sa re ga pa sa re ga pa sa um. You can choose some other notes as well if you like. Da da di da sa ni pa ga ga pa ga re. So the world of the dotted quaver is beautiful. You, you can get immersed in it and improvise and create your own melodies and phrases and riffs and whatnot. 
So try and put it together with the old version. Two and three and four and this is normal crotchets. One and two and now to do the dotted quaver we go. One and a two. So that's the next stage of beat division or commonly known note value. So we've covered 100% of the beat, which is a crotchet, 75% of the beat, which is a dotted quaver. And what's next? You may argue, okay, after 75% comes 50%. That's usually what we do. But we also have the world of triplets where the triplet will go one thirds, two, two thirds and three thirds. So one third will be the quicker triplet two-thirds of a beat would be the slower triplet or what we call in music as a quarter note triplet. So a quarter note triplet is such that three of them make up a minim. Okay? Or three of them make up two crotchets or two quarter notes. So when we call something a quarter note triplet, it is a tuplet symbol where we write three or we could have written five, which is a quintuplet or any other division. But if we write three, it's a triplet. So what that means is a quarter note, th a gang of three will always equal to two quarter notes in that time or it will equal to one minim. So a quarter note triplet equals to two quarter notes, the value of two quarter notes or it's equal to two beats. So how do we count a triplet? Instead of saying one E and a two E and a three E and a, which is dividing by four, we don't need that. We need a triplet to divide by three. So it will go one and a two and a three and a one and a two and a three and a one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, one and a two and Triple it, triple it, trip. So, where is this note going to latch on to? It's going to latch on to the two thirds point of the beat. Or, what I would like to say in terms of percentage is 66.666 or 66.67 or something, right? So, you go one and a two and a three and a. So, you could start with crotchets one and a two and a three and a four and a play quarter notes. Tuck it, tuck it, tuck it, tuck. But keep the triplet vibe in mind now. Tuck. It. One and a two and a three and a four and a one and two. It will take its time to resolve because you're still in this lecture. I'm trying to say play the same sarega pa always. You're doing that as a cycle, right? So. One and a two and a three and a four. So one and a two and a thum 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 thum. One and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two. So four of those note combos da 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 di da 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 di da 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 di da will will resolve this triplet phrase. Let me show you again. New cycle. Change. Try to internalize this like it's its own melody. In your mind, you're going one and a two and a three and a two. Or you could say takita takita takita. Like four note four note groupings, but you're dividing the beat by three. But not the takita takita. You're not playing at every division. You're playing at every alternate division. So takita takita takita. So how does this compare again with crotchets? Hundred percent of the beat is this. Then we have seventy five percent, which we learned earlier. One e very busy. 16 notes it's a very eastern sound okay okay so unlike a lot of my other YouTube videos where I go more complex at the end 
what you guys need to realize is we finished all the hard stuff now the easy stuff is following us now so we've done 100% we've done 75% which is dotted quavers we've done 66.67% which is a quarter note triplet combos what's after 66.67 conventionally speaking 50% which is quavers which divides by 2 and i think that will be super easy all you have to do is say 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 Four and one and two and now play your notes. One and two and three and. You could also see the notation. There's a notation laid out for you on our. Uh, it's also there for download on Patreon. So do consider a copy there. One and two and three and four and. So how does this compare with crotchets or quarters? Quarters was. Ta ke di mi ta ke. Then we had seventy-five. Money and a two and a two. Ta 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 Now, moving forward to the uh, next division. So we've covered hundred percent, seventy five percent, sixty six point six seven percent. We are getting closer and closer to like lesser percentages. We've done fifty percent. What's after fifty? Conventionally speaking, one third or thirty three percent of the beat. Thirty three percent of the beat we already learned when we learned two thirds, which is one and a two and a three and a four and a, but with everything. So that actually may be very easy on the mind. So that will be called as eighth note triplets. An eighth note triplet is such that three of them equals to one quarter note or one crotchet. Okay. So a one beat. So eighth note triplets. Uh, just to set it up for us, one and a two and a three and a four and a. so with my voice, each note will go with it. So one, one and a two and a three and a four and a. so it'll recycle after four beats. But you are playing four note combos. One and a two and so ta ke ta ta ke ta 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 ta. One and a two and a three and. Very different than the sixty-six percent mark, which is, but very similar as well. Why? It's the same triplet grid. Then. So we have the slow one, quarter note triplet. The fast one, eighth note triplet. So last but not least, we have the semi quavers. Semi quavers will essentially divide the beat by four. So you're looking at twenty five percent of the beat, which is one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. So pretty much what we did for seventy five percent, one e and a two e and e and boom. Fifty so percent was one and two and three. So this is like the fastest version where you're playing all the notes in that time grid, one e and a two e and a three. So everything would in involve. So if you compare your right hand with your left hand, there are four notes in the right hand with one note in the left hand, because the left hand continues to hold its ground by playing crotchets or quarter notes. Say takadimi or one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a three e and a. So just to compare, hundred percent.
50 परसेंट ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट can equate all the the three speeds and if you're a beginner you could actually just stick with that you know you could do 100% you could do 50% 25% which are all the usual suspects come to think of it uh, and then you have the triplet world where we go fast triplets or eighth note triplets then you can go to crotchet or slow triplets was the 75% one which was a bit weird the most groovy if you ask me is i didn't want to miss that out because i love rhythm so uh, so these are about all the note values guys i'm sure you'll agree that using this concept you have different percentages of the beat what if you like go beyond 100% you could have like 150% of the beat which is what now 150% will be a dotted crotchet so that will be 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 right 1 and 2 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 so that's 150% you may argue why can't i divide the beat into 8 units well you can it's just semi quavers with, with faster what is that uh, a 30 second note which divides the beat into 8 right so then you could go so that you could argue is 12.5% of the beat right 25% divided by 2 i hope i've got my maths right but i'm sure you'll be better than me at this field especially if you're uh, a, a, a genius at fractions and percentages which is all that this lesson pretty much needs so a good way to uh, so let's conclude the lesson with a few tips and a few pointers a good way to practice this lesson first of all is to start with what i told you c d e g with a singular bass that's just a c in the left hand and what you could do moving forward is you can then use it with a metronome or try and play it along with a drum beat but don't give yourself anything more than a crotchet or a quarter note and this exercise will really get you to understand what those note values mean the note values we see every day in our sheet music ultimately this is all they mean they are just fractions they are just fractions of a beat or percentages of a beat you know all the way up to 100% or more than 100% if you do a dotted crotchet it's 150 you do a, a minim it's 200% you do a dotted uh, minim it's 300% you do a whole note or a semi brief it's 400% so ultimately you should look at this as a x axis time grid and say i have this symbol what does it mean how long is it that's exactly what music notation is all about it's about there is a note which you stare at it lasts for how long or there could be a rest which also lasts for that long and then you ask yourself after that what what is the note first of all how long is the note and then what is the note and that covers your x and y axis of music if you think about it and the z axis will be pretty much the volume how loud should i play the note so if you ask yourself this question how long should i play a note then what is the note or in whichever order and then how loud should i play the note that's how the field of music or i would say the field of sound exists in physics at the bare minimum these are the three properties of sound if you think about it pitch volume and uh, duration or time length and so on right guys hope you found the lesson useful do consider downloading a copy of the notes on patreon and it'll be great if you can also uh, hit the the like button on our youtube channel there's a bell icon for regular notifications do consider hitting that and let us know in the comments what you thought about the lesson and also things which you'd like to learn in the future and if you'd like something more structured you can head over to nathanielschool.com on our website you either have a free tutorial section with our videos cataloged very well for you to access or you can look at our members only videos which showcase a structured course of content or a structured course format for piano learning music theory learning rhythm training ear training at different levels so uh 
uh, all the best with that have fun practicing and do let us know what you think in the comments or you could drop us a note on instagram or record something and tag either me or the school cheers and see you in the next one